I decided to do the aircraft in um, markings inspired by um, civilian reg N21 FS. Um, now this is an aircraft that was uh, delivered to the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, Station Trenton on 25th of March 1952 and it served with the uh, Canadian uh, Air Force for many years um, until uh, retired uh, in uh, May um, of 1965 uh, ending up on the civilian uh, registry um, the aircraft um, wound up in the hands of Frank Borman, Apollo astronaut, um, on uh, March uh, 10th of March 92, and it was registered as N21 FS, uh, with the FS being for Frank and his wife Su Susan, um, and it was restored as a uh, 1942 uh, AT7. Uh, bearing uh, bogus 87 uh, tail markings the uh, it's kind of aircraft that appeared regularly at um, Oshkosh and uh, events such as that eventually passed on to the hands of Dr. Hugo Mattis, a Swiss owner of a medical company in 2007 and was delivered where well, it was delivered to in Switzerland, though it retained its US uh, registration. And it is his personal um, aircraft. Um, the aircraft is um, currently and uh, open operated in uh, from Grenchen in Switzerland. So that's a little bit of background. I must admit my markings aren't quite correct. I struggled to sort out the uh, registry and I had a bit of a disaster as you'll discover later on doing the red and white stripes on the tail. And in the end, just for convenience sake, I gave it a check registry. So maybe it may have passed on to someone else after a uh, time with Dr. Hugo Matty's maybe sold on to a, uh, a check um, electronics entrepreneur or something like that so anyway that's a little bit of the background you can see here how the, the nice color scheme uh, I realized there were differences uh, between the model and the aircraft so I just tried to encapsulate the feel rather than the exact representation of um, the uh, aircraft owned by Mr. Mattis so a little bit of the background there Right, a little bit of progress on the uh, Beach C45 Expediter. Um, cockpit is now largely done. I couldn't help myself, I ended up uh, scratch building some seats. I normally do that with plastic card, probably made them a bit too wide. They should be about four millimeters wide. They've come out closer to six, which is a bit oversized. So. Uh, but I use the thin plastic card method. Uh, armrest is again too high though, should be cut lower. But that said, they look like seats and they fit. They're not, they don't seem massively over scale uh, or under scale. And it's a little bit of scratch building and method I found of doing aircraft seats to uh, fill out a cockpit. Added instrument panel in as well. That can be seen, not sure how well there. There you go. And just something to busy up a little bit. Now, the aircraft in question does have a, like an astrodome, navigation dome, photography dome. And I found I did have a small component from in the kit stash, goodness knows what from, that actually match that very nicely so that's been readied to take there and the area around it also scribed so it's like a an approved conversion that was done on the aircraft um and that just gives you a little bit more the thing is though the glazing on this thing is so thick misshapen 
you are not going to see much at all. You really, really, I mean, you don't see much, even if it's good quality glazing on an on a uh, light aircraft kit or an airliner kit but it's there it gives you some visual to visual acuity i suppose down this side there should be some bench seats but again there's enough in there to busy it up a little bit and to give you some impression that's vaguely based on what photographs i could uh could find in terms of the interior color and just creates a little bit color variation as well the cockpit seemed to be mostly in the original chromate green and I've done the uh, the cabin in the tan tone that I spotted. So that's how I've approached this. I say these seat sides in future projects I will need to make them a little bit shorter, maybe only cut it at about six millimeter high. But it seems to be a reasonable way to make scratch build representative airliner seats and if you've got better glazing then easy to put seat belts on them and a padded armrest uh, cushion you know you can do a lot more with that as your starting point but for this it'll work so this is where we're at fuselage halves about to go together and then we'll go from there so here we are and uh, got the fuselage halves together i've been using thin super glue as my filler and then doing a lot of sanding and reinstating the panel lines. Um, a few points of note, use thin super glue along the seam. I let it set then just to finish off I put a little bit of super glue accelerator on it. Best way of applying it is with a pipette. I don't have the spray format, I've got this version the Expo Activator, and a bottle of that stuff seems to last you for ages, and you can see where it's from. Um, so, coming together quite well. Fairly basic panel lines on this thing. No real rivets that I can see of, and I'm not going to try and put rivets on on, on it. Um, that's, fit is far from the worst I've seen you. Uh, but still you've got a bit of a step and you need to do quite a lot of rework now because there isn't that much delicate detail on it you're not going to obliterate that much when you're sanding so that's the basic fuselage together and uh, hopefully when I hit this with the airbrush later on today it uh, won't look too bad so that's why I'm up on the fuselage wings it's going to be these cowlings now around here that start I'm going to have to uh, put a lot of detail on oh, wait, there we go so what you've got is there's actually meant to be cowling flaps around this area and this portion is painted silver on the aircraft I've looked at so I need to I may well just engrave the cowling flap lines I've deepened these panel lines here but there's the cowling flaps that will run from here through to here so i'm going to have to instate those and the other thing that's significantly missing is there's absolutely no exhaust um i've looked through the spares and i don't have anything for it so i'm probably going to use a little bit of this tube and uh mock up the uh an exhaust stack one for either engine so once I've got that done, then get the wing halves together. Again, you're not going to see much of the detail inside the uh, undercarriage base. I'm not too worried about that. Likewise, I'm going to paint the inside of the cowling um, black. And then just a gunmetal finish for the uh, engine. So you're not going to see too much once props are in place. And this is all like sort of shadowed out. So this is where we are. So where are we with this? Um, wings are on. Uh, quite a lot of work now. You'll notice there's a difference in the engines. It appears that the carpet monster was particularly hungry and actually ate one of my bloody engines. I was on hands and knees doing the usual, you know, prayers of can you release my engine please and things like that. Unfortunately, the carpet monster was not um, listening and uh, did not uh, return my engine so I knocked one up what I'm probably going to do is make a FOD cover 
um, like a canvas cover you'd put over the uh, engines to stop nesting birds, uh, finding a home in your cowling and things like that. And then put FOD covers on the pitu tubes and stuff like that. And uh, that's a good way of when you have a little incident like that. So they do look, they are different. Um, and sufficiently different, I think, to uh, do that. I think I did, because the goal is still to have this finished uh, by end of play tomorrow. As it's, as I say, a, a public holiday in the UK. Um, I didn't want to spend like an entire day making scratch building an engine for this, but yes, the carpet monster has been fed. While the muggy monster has been taking up residence here as well. Haven't you, Migs? Uh, anyway. One muggy monster all sat there. That's a Kit Kat. Anyway. Uh, so coming along quite well, I'm going to hit it with the first spray coat now just to look at the state of the uh, seams and then we'll go from there this is a uh, progress now on the uh, expediter which cross c45 expediter i've got most of the uh, painting done just some detailing some bits didn't quite work out and you'll see in the photographs of the actual aircraft i tended to do this meant to be blue and white stripes i attempted to do those and that went completely tits up with b with sorry red and white stripes and uh, i ended up with bleed through and no other end of, no end of trouble so i just ended up doing it as a plain uh surface also as i discovered the engine needles on the uh top skin um uh, top side of the wing extend a bit further back on the actual aircraft so it's sort of <laughs> a few inaccuracies but it's heading in the right direction and I've had fun you know doing this as a sort of a, for me a speed build um, it sort of, I think it captures the uh, the look of the actual aircraft quite nicely so just some detailed parts to put on and that uh, blister on there uh, I'll find a couple of decals to go on it and it will be done. Yeah, took a few coats. It was basically chromate green base with the Tamiya paint. Then, uh, after I've done some re sanding, grey, followed by black, and then followed by a few layers of aluminium and silver. And then the red and black was hand painted. So that's where we are. So it'll soon be, I'll put a registered serial. A registration on it and we'll uh, finish up fairly soon just doing some detailed parts like the exhaust the wheels and things like that so here we have my speed build complete uh, the uh, PM model C45 expediter I wanted to do it in civilian markings. I did find an aircraft to base it on. Um, and I came pretty close. Um, didn't Invariably didn't have the decals for it. So it's meant to have red and white stripes. So it should be mostly red with white stripes on the tail. When I attempted to do the masking, I ended up with bleed through. So I said, screw it, just paint the uh, the tail fully red and it doesn't look too bad that way. Matches the uh, engine cowlings. Um, it should be an N registration, much smaller. Well, I know the, air, the actual aircraft operates out of Switzerland, despite having a US reg. Uh, so I let it use a check... Uh, a check uh, reg is just one I happen to have it in the uh, stash. Um, a few other differences to cowling the um, after the cowling should be a bit longer, but it was I think it was inspired by the aircraft by the subject aircraft, which there'll be pics of this in this vid. So fit not brilliant, uh, flash everything else. Main thing was bought the kit on Friday. And it's now Monday evening and it's done. So oops, one thing I should be going on, so um and it's so it's done. And I'm happy enough with that. 
it's I sort of met my time challenge goal to see if I could build a reasonable do a decent build in the uh, over the time over this time scale rather than a week long build so just two and a bit days uh, some scratching in scratch building involved uh, a bit of conversion work to put the uh, blister the uh, mini nav dome on uh, seats on the interior and the issue that I had that the carpet monster ate one of the engines and so I had to do a little block with the cylinders and that lot inside it um, so well, it's painted black so it's hard to really see um, so overall yeah I'm pretty happy with this it looks like what it's supposed to do um, it captures the feel of the aircraft it, I based it upon um, no significant issues like visible panel lines some not brilliant filling on the wing route uh, the paint finish hasn't come out too bad the actual aircraft is highly polished but there's a coarseness to the um, plastic and uh, so it's sometimes really hard to replicate that with a spray so I've still got a reasonably shiny aluminium finish which I like um, yeah use a broom bristle for the aerial uh, pitto tubes underneath so nothing too fancy about this build nothing too um, extreme about it or over the top about it but could I build do a reasonable build in a relatively short space of time and I think I've achieved that and so yeah it can sit there yes the uh, anti-glare panel the masking got a little bit ragged um, and I have to accept that that's not brilliant um, but the rest of it seems okay and it was fun just nice to not get bogged down in a build just whack it off quickly and have it done dusted and there we are so that's the civilian Beechcraft C45 Expediter in civilian markings based upon um, Aircraft Reg N21FS So Thanks for watching, I'll get this video compiled now fairly quickly and this will go up in a couple of groups Thanks guys.